Previously, on Secrets, Crimes, and Audio Tape. It was my fault. It was all my fault. No one deserved I this. I killed Carly. I killed Kirsten. The window's shaking again? No. It's me. I can feel it. No, just stay calm. Stay calm. It's fine. It's fine. This is absolutely insane, but it's fine. Just breathe. Just breathe. We will strike a balance between privacy and protection. I will be here if you need me. I'm scared. You should be. From Wondery, this is Secrets, Crimes, and Audio Tape. I'm your host, David Reinstrom. What's your secret? My secret is that I can fly, but I choose not to. We'll be returning to Sight Unseen, our adventure of psychic powers and high schoolers. But first, I wanted to thank you all for a fabulous first season of Secrets, Crimes, and Audio Tape. We're wrapping up this first season at the end of May, and while we're getting ready for season two, we want to hear from you. We've made a survey at wondery.com secrets to help determine what worked and didn't work for you in this first season, and what you'd like to see more of in future seasons of SCA. Head to wondery.com secrets to fill it out. I'll remind you at the end of the episode, too. We'll take your responses and use them to help determine how to make season two even better. We'll also take your favorite moments from season one and turn them into a sweet block party episode. Start thinking about it now. What did you love the most about the first season of our show? Leave us a voice message at gagbag5711. That's 424-224-5711. And maybe we'll put it on the show. What's your favorite part of Secrets, Crimes, and Audio Tape, and why? And if you have any questions about us and how we operate, ask away. We'll answer those questions and round up your favorite moments in that Season Ender Block Party episode. We return to the story of Amanda Houston in Part 3 of our series, Sight Unseen. If you aren't caught up, I recommend you navigate backwards a few episodes in our podcast feed to listen to the first two parts of the story. Nevertheless, I'll sum up. After losing two friends and her sight in a terrible car accident, our heroine Amanda's latent psychic powers begin to emerge. When angry, she can generate destructive waves of force with her mind. When she doesn't drown them out with noise, she can hear the thoughts of others. We join Amanda now as she comes home from the hospital for the first time since the accident and begins to learn how to adapt to her new situation without the privilege of sight. This is Sight Unseen, Episode 3, Martine. And we are home. Careful, honey, careful. I'm okay. I'm okay. Hey, Remo. Okay, okay, okay. I've missed you too. Vanilla candle wax. Floor polish. Dog. 17 years to get to know this house. Now I have to walk it without eyes. So, staircase to the right. Wooden railing but no view down below. No pictures on the walls, no sun shining through the western window. You okay? Yeah, it's just... Oh, we know, honey, we know. And up the stairs we go. I know where my bedroom is, Mom. I'm just trying to help, honey. I can do it. Fine. Let us know if you need anything. Okay. Don't worry, honey. First door on the left. A few big steps over to the bed. So soft. The multicolored quilt my grandma made. It's still a quilt. There just aren't any colors. Oh, come here, Remo. I know, I know. Everything's different now, huh, boy? But everything's gonna be okay. Because... Got a mistress. Eleven years of marriage. Whatever. Got a mistress. No, get out! Get out! Hey, Joseph, who said you could take a vacation? Oh, good, they're gone again. Now I can sit here with the only thing that's worse, my own damn thoughts. Ow, damn it. Where's the mirror? 
Where's the picture? Where is that picture? I know I stuck it here. Top right, top fr There. That should be us. Carly. Kirsten. Smiling. I'm... No, damn it, stupid tears. They'll smudge the photo. At noon, hit the traffic, make it to my audition by 2 p.m., then home for a few hours. No! no. Where's my iPhone? Earbuds! Oh, wiggling away. Two turtles touch their toes. Three thespians throw thimbles. Four frogs hear you fast. Five friends fight a fire. Six serpents... How are you feeling? Better than yesterday. Good. We'll build up slower from now on. Healing walks are supposed to heal, not hurt after all. Just a little farther and we're home. Just a little farther until the voices come back, you mean? And of course I don't have my iPhone. Marcus! Long time no see. Yeah, long time no see. Um, hi Amanda. Mark? Hey, Yurimo. Hey, buddy. Well, calm down, lovebirds. At least get off the front porch and the neighbors will talk. Here, let me help. No, Dad's got me. Yeah. Um, just get the door? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Okay, here we go. Right! So, you want to go to the couch or to the kitchen? Couch. How are you feeling? Thirsty. I'll, I'll get you some water. And I'll give you two some space. Thanks, Dad. Just say the word, though, and I'm coming down with a shotgun. <laughs> Dad. I've always wanted an excuse for a shotgun. <laughs> Come on, Remo. Come on. Here's your water. So, you look good. Do I? Funny, I haven't looked in the mirror since I got home. That's not what I meant. Then again, I... I haven't been home that long. Certainly not long enough for anyone to visit. Amanda, come Only, on. Only, what, three days since I've been home? Who could possibly stop by in such a short time? I can explain. Certainly not long enough for my boyfriend to visit. Yeah, this is the part where you start explaining. I'm sorry, all right? That's an apology, not an explanation. Well, I owe you both. It's just... I'm scared, okay? You're... What do you have to be scared of? Not showing off for a damn college scout? Oh, forget you. Amanda, please. I'm trying to be real with you, all right? You know me. Don't cry. No fear. Well, here I am, and I am scared. I'm scared as hell, because I love you, and I don't want to lose you. I'm scared because I've already screwed up. I didn't stay away on purpose, okay? There's been football and school, and all that, but I don't know how to be here for you right now. Just be here. You don't have to I do know. anything. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just, last week at the hospital, you hearing those voices, acting all crazy, it made me feel crazy. Like, how can all this be happening? First you're in a car wreck, then you're blind. I just needed some time to figure it all out. I didn't want to hurt you more by showing up and not being able to help. Give me a second chance. I'll get it together and I'll be here for you. Please. I needed you, you know? I know. I know. And I'm here now. And you know what? I'm here to stay. Can you stay the night? Nights are the hardest. Yeah. I heard your dad talking about a shotgun from the other room. <laughs> oh, please. He wouldn't shoot a mouse if it bit off his nose. <laughs> <laughs> Good. What's this? Kissing in my dad. house? Dad. Where's my shotgun? Oh, my God. Kidding. <laughs> Lunch is in 15. Now, Mark can stay if he wants to. <laughs> <laughs> he really loves messing with me, doesn't he? <laughs> He's a dad. He lives for it. Hang on, hang on, everyone. 
I've got project proposals from David, Jesus, and Melinda. I need the rest no later than Friday, guys. Friday. Also, there are two slots left open in the peer-to-peer -peer tutoring program if you're interested and you've got the time to come talk to me. There are 25 extra credit points in it for you. Okay, that's it. Get out of here. Mr. Yeah. Uh, Matthew. Uh, about the tutoring program. No, oh, don't worry. You're already signed up. Uh, no, that's uh, not it, actually. Um, can I choose who I tutor? Wait. Hang on. Uh, Corey, could you close the door behind you? Okay. Thank you. Choose the student. Well, normally we don't allow that. Uh, I was uh, thinking Amanda Houston. Um, hmm, well, she's definitely going to need the extra help, but... Uh, I can handle it. You're sure. Yeah, we're talking geometry. I got it. And English. I can handle it. And 20th century history. I don't have to help her in phys ed, do I? Uh, because I do suck at that. Yeah, no, I'm serious. She's going to need additional help with everything. Sorting through notes, studying for tests... And you'll be coordinating with her other instructors. Other instructors? Mm hmm Mobility instructor and a Braille instructor. All this on top of your own classes. I can handle it. <laughs> well, you're a better man than I am, Gunga Din. I'll set it up. Cool. Thanks. No problem. Uh, do you think this qualifies for maybe more than 25 points? Yeah, don't get ahead of yourself. And here we are. Oh, I've always wondered what your house was like, but your room, it's huge. I mean, it's how I always imagined it, but really? Oh, I'm sorry I never invited you over before. Oh, you have a dollhouse? It was my grandmother's. Uh, closet's right here. Oh, <gasps> Amanda, your closet's literally the size of my room. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty big. Pretty big? Are you kidding me? This is the biggest closet I think I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, these are all so gorgeous. God, I wish I had your life. I'm sorry, I... No, no, I... don't. Don't worry about it. So, what does the accessibility pamphlet say about closets? Mm, let me look. Okay, first, give away any items you haven't worn in a year. That's going to be a ton. Daniela used to get me gigs that came with next season samples to wear around town. The kind of experimental stuff they weren't sure would sell, you know. I don't think I ever wore them. Hmm, like this yellow blouse that looks like shag? <laughs> There's tons of crap like that. Good. Gone. You really want to help me with this? Yeah, I said I would. Let's start with these. J Jenny? Yeah? What size are you? Shoes or clothes? Both. I'm usually a four for pants and a medium for shirts. Shoes are a ten. Apparently, I inherited my abuelita's giganto feet. <laughs> well, if you see anything you like, if you like it and it fits, it's yours. What? For real? Yeah, any of it. <gasps> Amanda! Oh, uh, no, 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 no. These are, these are your clothes. You earned them. I'm going to be getting rid of a lot anyway. I mean, I'd rather know they're going to you than some stranger shopping at a Goodwill. You sure? I am. Thank you! Thank you! I, I, thank you! Um, that, but, I mean, only if you really don't want it. <laughs> Deal. All right. <laughs> uh, so, let's start with these blouses. Uh, we've got one that would make you look like a 1960s secretary from Mad Men. <laughs> Toss. Okay. Now we got... And, um, by the way, I can still introduce you to Daniela if you want. Huh? My agent. I can get you a meeting with her once she starts returning my calls. Amanda, that's... You could be a model, Jenny. <laughs> I... I don't know what to say. Say yes. Please. Come on, it's the least I can do to pay you back. For what? Helping me. Listening to me? You don't have to do any of this. I know, but I want to. But... Okay, fine. <laughs> if it'll make you stop. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, now let's get to it. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, mm. this thing looks like a peacock that's been put through a wood chipper. <laughs> that's so exactly what it looks like. <laughs> Toss! <laughs> Come downstairs, you're gonna meet the
already told Dad. Now I'm telling you. I'm not telling you. Stop, because she's on her way. So now, you can come down and say, Amanda, Amanda, open this door. Go away. Oh. Oh. The best thing I need right now is just not have to like it, but I swear to God. <sighs> well, this is going to be fun. You want me to try again? No. No. Maybe we should all go up together. Oh, yeah. Then she's going to feel like we're all ganging up on her. The original plan is fine. <sighs> junk. Junk. Bill. Architectural Digest. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are you working on those flyers now? I told you I've got to get this done today. And the photographer just sent photos of three new listings. Do you know anything about this woman? I know absolutely nothing except that she's relatively new and she comes with very high marks. Which I'm sure they say about everybody. I thought you said you gave that up. Yeah, well, I say a lot of things. And she's early. I'll tell you what, how about I get that? No, no, I've got it. I've got it. I promise I'll be on my best behavior. Okay. Mrs. Houston, I'm Martin Marshall. Yes, <laughs> yes, you are. Please, call me Terry. Only if you call me Martin. <laughs> Come in, please. I love your outfit, Martine. Are those Jimmy Choo's? They are. So, where's Amanda? Amanda? I do not need a mobility counselor, thank you. She's upstairs. You have one new message. Sunday, September 25th at 1.09 p.m. Hey, Amanda, this is Tani. Um, I really wanted to come over, but I've got this thing to do with my mom today. Um, just wanted to say that I'm so sorry about, you know, what you're going through, and yeah, that's, that's about it, I guess. I, I hope you're doing okay. Bye. Fine. Go be with your mom. Except for Mark and Jenny, I don't want to talk to anybody. <sighs> Least of all, my new instructor. Bonjour. My name is Martine. Is it safe for me to come in? I guess. Is that soda for me? How do you know I have one? Maybe I have nothing. Then why are you fizzing? <laughs> it's right in front of you. There we go. May I join you? Sure. Uh, what were you listening to? The Smiths. Oh. Kind of depressing, aren't they? That's kind of the point. All right. Obviously, there are a million things I could say to you right now. We could engage in small talk or agree about what a horrible situation this is for you. But ultimately, that's not going to get us anywhere. People may have tried to comfort you with, uh, it's going to be all right when they know everything is not going to be all right. I'm not those people. What I can do is be brutally frank and say that there's not going to be a silver lining waiting for you when you wake up tomorrow. But you know what? Tomorrow's still coming, so you need to be ready for it. And that means accepting that this is how things are going to be from now on. You really have a way with people, you know that? You don't hold back. Neither do I. So... No, am I done yet, but... No matter what you think right now, your life is not over. My career is... Prove them wrong. I'm disabled. Only in your head. Especially if you let other people tell you that you're disabled. Focus on what you can do over what you think you can't. Yeah, right. 
such a lovely bouquet on your desk. Who is it from? Friend of a friend of my mom's. Works with HBO. Silver roses. You remember what silver looks like, yes? Mm hmm. Smell it. Don't worry, we won't start today. But uh, before I go, uh, there's something I need to ask you. What? The latest collection from Camilla Bianchi. Did you get to see it? You mean the summer collection? Yeah. Your honest opinion. Wasn't it simply atrocious? <laughs> it, it was pretty bad. <gasps> yeah. Bad? My God, Amanda, it's dreadful. Looks like something Salvador Dali threw together. The woman's gone completely insane, if you ask me. And those shoes? I mean, who wears heels that high? <laughs> <laughs> Women who can't be very happy, that's who. <laughs> What are you wearing? Um, it's a provocateur. I love their line. Provocateur? That's like... Like what? Never mind. <laughs> Uh, this is your cane. Tomorrow we are taking a walk with that thing. You can tell me about surfing, and I'll tell you how Fashion Week went. And seriously, change your music. <laughs> Au revoir. Okay. Okay, that... that went well. Provocateur. That's almost a thousand dollars for a pantsuit. She's kind of cool. Sounds like you lucked out. Mm -hmm. Over the phone, she told me we could practice in French. Oh, c'est magnifique. You speak French too? You never told me that. <laughs> oh, God, I wish I was trilingual. Hell, I'd settle for bilingual. Hey, Mrs. Johnson. Ms. Mendez, aren't you supposed to be in yearbook? Oh, she's helping me. My mom's in a meeting with Principal Geary. Oh. Hmm. All right. Well, I hope she's taking very good care of you. We're very glad to have you back, Amanda. Thanks. <laughs> How long do you think I can use that excuse? We play our cards right. We could milk it for months. Nah. Hey, Jenny. Oh, Amanda. Who's that? Uh, Matthew Neely. Uh, sorry, I, <laughs> I didn't see you there. Is that some sort of blind joke going around school? What? No, 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 not at all. I was, I, I was just, um, <laughs> I, uh, he, uh, <laughs> uh, hi. <laughs> hi. What do you need, Matthew? What? Oh, uh, nothing. Just headed to the tutoring center. Uh, you know where that is, right, Amanda? Yeah. Why? Why? What? Oh, oh, because I'm going to be your tutor. Didn't Nybauer tell you? No, this is my first day back. I haven't talked to anyone. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, I'm going to be your tutor. Okay. Uh, do you have any favorite topics? Anything I should be ready to talk about? I'm taking this job very seriously, you know, uh, because of the credits. Thank you again, Mr. Gary. Of course. Goodbye. Bye. Okay, we have a lot to do today, so... Oh, Matthew! Hi, Mrs. Houston. Hi, how are you, Matthew? I'm doing great, how about you? It's been difficult, but, but we're managing. We're managing, right? We've got to run off for a checkup now, but it was nice seeing you. Tell your mother I said hello. I will, thanks. Great, take care. See you later. Yeah, bye. Bye. Uh, after you, madame. Not cool, dude. So not cool. What? I... Man, I just can't win today. I don't understand any of this. My brain looks normal on all Dr. Lee's scans. No swelling, no scarring, no nothing. I'm a medical miracle. Which is great, but... Maybe that's just it. Maybe what I can do is beyond the scope of modern science. Whoa. I sound like someone out of one of those B-movies from the 50s. I wonder... Remo, go get your ball. Okay. 
I'm going to throw a ball just by thinking about it. No problem. Jeez. Boy, could you get a little more slobber on it? Well, if this works, I'll never have to pick up one of your drool bombs again. All right. Try to relax. Oh, come on. Go. Go. Go! Amanda. Whoa! I'm sorry, I, I did not mean to... Joseph, is something wrong? Am I in... No, no. I simply sensed some strain and had to be sure you weren't hurt. Well, I'm not hurt, and nothing's wrong. Next time, ring the doorbell or something. Don't just sneak up on me like that. You scared the crap out of me. Amanda, it's not like I can telegraph when... Try. And I thought you said you were going to block out the voices. I have been. But you have been doing a good job on your own as well. Oh. Okay. Okay. Move. Damn it. What am I doing wrong? Very funny. I was just curious. What are you doing? I'm trying to make a tennis ball move with my mind, all right? Oh, it doesn't sound ridiculous until you actually say it. It's not ridiculous at all. It's wonderful. Such an exciting period of exploration. I shall leave you then. Wait! Wait. Hang on. Yes? Since you're here, maybe you can tell me what I'm doing wrong. It will help you more if I left you to your own discovery. I do not know what you are capable of any more than you do, but I do sense that your abilities are potent. Great. You're here to help me, so help me. It's not like there's a YouTube tutorial for this kind of stuff. All right. But then you must learn for yourself. You are trying to move the ball? Yeah. Then you must see in your mind what you want to see before you. You are commanding the ball, but not your thoughts. Visualize. Then push. See in my mind what I want to see before me? Push. Okay. Thanks, Joseph. Joseph? Guess this isn't going to be the Luke Skywalker Yoda dynamic I was hoping for. Okay. Let's pick this up and try again. The tennis ball. I want to see it move. All right. Focus. See the ball. See it in your hand. See it flying away and push. Whoa! It worked. It worked! That must have gone over the fence. Yep, definitely went over the fence. Sorry, boy. So, what else can I try? Let's try the pool. Careful. Careful, and here we are. All right. Water. I want to see it move. To ripple. Make waves. See the pool. See it rippling. Push. Oh my god. I can hear it's working. It's... No, 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 no. Focus, focus, focus. Okay, okay. See the pool. See the pool. See the waves forming. Keep pushing, keep pushing. No, oh, see the waves rise higher. Oh, fish shoes, fish shoes. Ah, screw it, it's just a little water. Higher, higher. Oh, come on. I was doing so well, what just- Bonjour, Amanda. Let's get to work. What? I, yeah, okay. Yeah, get to work. Come on, boy. Now, the idea here is that simple folds are used for those bills that you use the most often, ones, fives, and tens. With ones, you don't fold them at all. Easy to put away, easy to find later. Amanda? Sorry? Are you paying attention? Easy to put away, easy to find. Got it. The five you fold in half lengthwise, left to right, and crease along the fold. 
tens, you fold those widthwise and again crease along the entire length of the bill. Why do you think that's important? I don't know. So they don't unfold and you don't mix up the money. What about hundreds? <laughs> we'll come to that in a second. Now, I'm going to take out my wallet. I've already made the fold so you can feel how, how they're, they're stacked together. Yeah. I <laughs> Amanda. What? Amanda, are you all right? You've been very... I, what just... You, you touched my wallet and then... When were you in London? How did you know I... Never mind. Forget it. Amanda. Forget it. All right. I saw. I touched her wallet and I saw things. Flashes of London, like overexposed film... I think it's London. It's been so long, but <laughs> Big Ben's Big Ben, right? But then, Camley Street. I swear the street sign said Camley Street. And the man, who was he? He grasped his head and fell to the ground. He looked dead. So, Martine certainly seems to be more than she appears. What did she do in London? What new power has Amanda uncovered? Will she master the delicate art of manipulating her surroundings with the power of her mind? Stay tuned for scenes from the next episode of Sight Unseen, right here on Secrets, Crimes, an audio tape. People are staring, aren't they? How can you tell? Oh my god. If I killed my friends... I wouldn't want to be alive. Jenny, get me out of here. I don't want to be here. Okay. I really don't want to be here okay. right now. Okay, hold on tight. Search the web for fatalities on Camley Street. There we go. I found this on the web for fatalities on Camley Street. A man found dead on Camley Street in Camden Town has died from an aneurysm. An inquest has ruled. Alan Krieg. So what do you have to do with Martine? I had the great pleasure of talking with director Bill Dufries about his work on Sight Unseen. Take a listen to our conversation. So you, you lived in the UK for over a decade, working in audio theater with the legendary producer Dirk yes. Maggs. Um, can you give me just can you give us just a brief overview of how audio fiction works in Britain? Well, it's uh, definitely much more uh, accepted over there and understood over there and appreciated over there. Uh, they, you know, so <laughs> the <laughs> and um, that's where I really my my passion, um, you know, was set afire over there um, and just being able to, you know, the idea of being able to I could actually, you know, on this short, somewhat portly, gray haired, you know, guy who can actually, you know, play all of these various characters and not have to worry about my, you know, you know, my personal appearance. So I just absolutely fell in love with the whole idea of doing it as an actor. But then uh, working with Dirk, I really, um, really found myself wanting to do it as a director and a, as um, as a producer. How have you incorporated what you learned working with Dirk in the UK into the work that you've brought to North American audiences? He's bigger than life and has such a wonderful sense of humor and um, a joie de vivre. And he just exudes this, this sense of bonhomie and, and fun. And I had such a grand time. And that was the first thing I picked up um, as a budding producer, director, walking into a Dirk Mag's production. It was like walking into a party, um, not not something that was uncontrolled or, you know, a free for all. Everybody had the freedom to just explore and have fun. They were invested in the production with Dirk. Dirk made everybody feel like they were all not just doing their, you know, particular parts, 
but were free to question, free to uh, suggest ideas and actually be a part of the overall production in every way. And just having, just having fun, so much, I, I mean, so much laughter. And then on top of that, the, the productions were just phenomenal. I had never heard anything like them. So that's what I really took from uh, working with Dirk, uh, was that sense of fun, that sense of freedom. And I was able to work on a few other productions with him after Spider-Man. Uh, we did An American Werewolf in London and... Judge Dredd. So um, a lot of stuff that I learned from him and uh, still a lot more I could learn from him. And I'm um, you know, really hoping I have the opportunity of working with him again so I can actually kind of observe a little bit more closely. What have you found interesting and challenging about working from an original script as opposed to a more recognizable property? It breathes in a different way. Um, there's more give in terms of changing things um, is still not, I wouldn't say in an embryonic state, but it does have that flexibility in that we can kind of come along and it's, oh, we got to change this or let's let's add something here let's, or let's um, address this character a little bit more deeply. And whereas any of the other pieces that we've done, you know, is having, you know, making sure that the creator is on board and there and not always having that uh, that luxury. So we tend to be a little bit more precious with other people's material. But whereas it was Lance and, um, you know, ostensibly mine, being the company that was producing it, uh, we felt, you know, we had that freedom and and explored it in a way that um, we, we don't always have the opportunity to do in others. So that was really, really um, fun and, and liberating. Um, Challenge-wise, um, probably uh, the same thing. Whereas with other creators who have, you know, a pedigree or a history, you know, you can kind of rely on their abilities in a way that, you know, this was Lance's first piece out there and okay. it had our name on it. So we had to really pay very close attention to it in a way that, uh, uh, you know, to make sure that everything did work, everything did ring the way we wanted it to. How did, uh, how did Natalie get roped in, Natalie the co-writer? Oh, that was a great find. That was Lance. Um, Lance has been doing a writer's group, actually, and he came across Natalie, and he mentioned her in passing um, as someone that he wanted to, you know, explore the idea of working with and with Sight Unseen, the, the protagonist being a young teenage girl. I thought, you know, I said, you know, basically, Lance, you're 40-plus and you're a guy, so we need a female perspective on this. And I think, you know, I really felt that that was essential uh, to a success and bringing in that perspective in a way that, you know, he wouldn't actually be able to approximate. And if, you know, if he did, it, it could really fall flat. Certain things that came out about this character and her family and her relationships with, uh, you know, her girlfriends and um, boyfriend that just were, I know for myself, I wouldn't have been able to come up with um, and... It really made all, all of the difference. Thank you, Bill. Now, if you like what you heard today, we'd love for you to rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts and spread the word on social media. Secrets, Crimes, and Audio Tape is part of a wave of incredible audio drama that's emerged in podcast land. There's one more way to help us, as always. Show a friend how to find our show on Apple Podcasts or their favorite app and subscribe. We always love receiving your calls and letters, you folks in podcast land. You can find us on Facebook, you can find us on Twitter, and you can give us an actual phone call and leave a message at 424-224-5711. That's GagBag5711. Keep it clean, relatively. And remember that end-of-season survey. It would be fantastic if you could head to Wondery.com slash secrets to tell us your favorite parts of our first season. One more time, that's Wondery.com slash secrets secrets. And now, credits. Episode 3 of Sight Unseen, Martine, feature the voices of Julia Whalen as Amanda Houston, Adam Henderson as James Houston, Lisa Lee as Terry Houston, Bernadette Colomine as Martine, Jason Lanier White as Mark, Shauna Ava as Jenny, Brennan Lee Mulligan as Matthew, and Martin Jarvis as Joseph. Also featured were William Dufries, Lisa Renee Pitts, and Lance Roger Axt. Martine was written by Lance Roger Axt and Natalie Fadak and directed by William Dufries. Original score by Carlin Daigle and Spencer Albee. 
Recorded at Invisible Studios, Los Angeles, California. Post-production by Mind's Eye Productions. Sight Unseen was created by Lance Roger Axt and produced by Pocket Universe Productions. Thank you for listening to Secrets, Crimes, and Audio Tape. The theme song for our series was composed by Mark Hadley. Our editor is Sergio Enriquez. Our executive producers are Jeffrey Glazer and Hernan Lopez for Wondering. Until next time, I'm your host, David Reinstrom. What's your secret? <laughs>